want to thank Pepe Wilner for giving me the opportunity to come and talk to you. As Rabbi Wilner mentioned, Purim is a very, very special day in a way even more than Yankee Purim. Nobody understands Purim. There are people who think that Purim is Lahavdal, a Jewish Halloween. You put on costumes, you make yourself nuts. No, Purim is a very, very special day. Purim is the Yisait, is the foundation of our Emunah, of believing in the Rabbeinu Shleim. Before we read the Megillah, we make three brachas. One of them is we thank the Rabbi Nishalayim, Baruch Atah Hashem, Sha'asa Nisim Ravisaynu Bayamim Ha'aim Bizman Azeh. We thank you, we exalt you, Rabbi Nishalayim, that you made miracles in Shushan, in the domains of Achashverosh, Bayan Mem Ha'aim in those days, Bizman Hazeh. The Rabbani Shlada made me. Let's take the Megillah. Let our fingers do the walking. We're going to walk through the Megillah and look for an Eason. Um, I must say, I already traveled through the Megillah many times. And I didn't find any Nisim in the Megillah. In the Chumash we find Nisim. By Yetzirah Mitzrayim, we had the Eshamakai, we had Chiyas Yamsuf, Nisim. The Rabbi Nishraelim changed nature. The Yamsuf flows, and the Rabbi Nishraelim made that the Yamsuf should freeze up, and, and there was um, a way, a road, walking through the Yamsuf. That's a mess. But for them, what Nisim do we have? We go through the Megillah, Rajvailish got drunk, and because of that, there was the episode with Vashti, and he killed Vashti. And then uh, Esther replaced Vashti as the queen. And then Haman became promoted, he became the Mishnah Lamelech. And then, uh, Dixon and Seresh were plotting to kill the king. And Mordechai found out, because he knew their language, they didn't expect him to know the language. And he told it, and, and it was written down, and told to Ahasuerus in his name. And then, Haman got angry at Mordechai, because he didn't bow and kneel to him. And then, he wanted to kill all the Jews. And then, Mordechai, um, uh, uh, Ahasuerus couldn't sleep. And they read the Chronicles before him, and it was read that Mordechai had saved the king's life. And Haman, who wanted to hang up Mordechai, so things were reversed, and Haman was hung up. And we made Purim. And in us, no mess. You could have written, you could have read such things that I have done in newspapers. 
No, Nielsen. Not a single nest in the whole Megillah. So why do we make the Bracha Shasa Nisim? What kind of Nisim are there? The Heilige of Anayasascha gives us some insight into this. There are Nisim in the Megillah. And he gives us a marshal, a parable. There was a man who was sick, and the doctor came, examined him. The doctor said, this man has another two hours to live. That's all. And everybody was crying and weeping. Not, the doctor said, not only two hours to live. And then the doctor, who was a chatterbox and liked to talk a lot, said, really, in China, there is a certain medicine that if that medicine would be administered to this patient, he could become healthy. But you know, in, in times of the B'nai Yisrael, there were no trains, there were no buses, there were no airplanes. If anybody wanted to go to China, he had to go there by horse till he came to the ocean and then he had to go uh, uh, by, by boat. It took six months to go to China from where the B'nai Yisrael lived. So the doctor said, in China there is a medicine. That medicine will make him healthy. But it takes three months to go to China and three months to come back. And this man only has two hours to live. No dice. Can't live. And then the doctor, who as I told you was a chatterbox, said, that even if we would have the medicine here, it would be of no avail, we can't use it. Because you need a special doctor who's trained to administer this medicine. You can't come take a, 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 a teaspoon and give him that medicine. You have to know exactly how much. If it's too much or too little, it won't help. And there's a doctor in America who knows who is trained and he knows how to administer this medicine. <laughs> so, to go to America and um, bring the doctor, if the doctor would want to come, would take three months, and then it would take another three months for the doctor to come here. That's six months. So, this man can't live. We don't have the medicine. We don't have the doctor. As this doctor was talking, the knock at the door, somebody comes in, breathless, he's panting. I brought the doctor. He just happened to come today on the boat. The doctor from America is here. But what's the use of the doctor? We don't have the medicine. So then there was another knock at the door. Somebody comes in, breathless, panting. I brought the medicine. The medicine is here. The doctor is here. The medicine was administered. The man started sweating, got up. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hu, Baruch he's healthy. Now, what is this a nurse? There was no nurse. A doctor came, a medicine came. But think, think deeply, dear boys. Isn't this a nurse? That just in time, just when you needed it, the doctor came, nobody expected him, and the medicine came from the other side, nobody expected it. This isn't a nurse. This is a nurse. 
Now, I have a watch. This watch has maybe a hundred components in it, a hundred screws, wheels, whatever, a battery, a hundred parts in it. So somebody went. I was alone in an island together with somebody. And that somebody took my watch and he opened it up with a little screwdriver and took apart the entire watch with all its hundred pieces in a plate. What do you do to me? Put my watch together again. He says, I don't know how. I don't know how to, I'm not a watchmaker. I don't know how to put the watch together again. So what did I do? I put the watch into an empty can, to the fish can. I put water parts in and I covered it up and I started shaking. And as I shook it, all the parts came together again. Would you believe it? Make sense? If the watch did come together again, that every part fit exactly into place, isn't that a mess? Isn't that a mess? What do you think, it's a mess? Yeah, he says it's a mess. It's a mess. That's how the B'nai Sattva explains the nest of Purim. There are two kinds of Nisim. There are Nisim where the Rabbani Shalom appears and he changes the ways of nature. Things happen supernaturally in the way that we're not accustomed to. Like in the Tzrayim, like in the Midbar, of course. If bread, which grows from the ground, so uh, as wheat, so instead of bread coming from the ground, bread comes down from heaven and it's man, that's a mess. But did you ever think, boys, bread that comes from the ground, you take a kernel of wheat, you put it onto the ground, it rains, the curl becomes rotten. After several months, a stalk starts growing and a plant appears which has thousands upon thousands of kernels of wheat. Isn't that a mess? That's not a mess. Of course it's a mess. We're used to it. We take it, we take it for granted. But of, of course that's a mess. That's a mess. Imagine you live, the Chassam Saifas does this. Imagine you going out of Mitzrayim. You went out of Mitzrayim and you are accustomed that bread as wheat grows from the ground and you came into the midbar, a big, big nest happened. Bread came down Menashemayim from heaven. It's a nest, right? Now, in the, in the midbar, they spent 40 years, children were born, they got used to the fact that bread comes down from heaven, then at the end of 40 years, these children who never were in Mitzrayim, but they were born in the Midbar, passed, they crossed the Yaldin, they came into Eretz Yisrael, and they saw bread growing from the ground. So they said, oh, such a big mess. We always knew that bread has to come down from heaven, and now bread comes from the ground. Isn't that a mess? That's a mess. They weren't used to it. They didn't take it for granted. So it's a mess. There are two kinds of nisim. There's 
the Nisim of Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim. They were supernatural Nisim. The Rabbani Yishim changed the ways and the behavior of nature. So, being that these Nisim happened in the first month, Achaydesh Azalachem, so the name of the Chaydash is Nisan, because many Nisan happened in Nisan. But as the Chaydashim start, start traveling the way down, they go down deeper, deeper, deeper. So the last month is Ado. Ado means a cloak. Something that I'm dressed with, some, a shroud, a cloak. Who knows here? Who can bring me some place in Chumash where the Shaivish of Ador means a, a cloak or a suit or who knows? Yeah? Adar Asaya. Oh, the Romer here is a brilliant boy. Yeah. Who like Adar Asaya? A cloak of Asaya. Ador. You see, the Nisim of Adol, the Nisim of Adol are, are cloaked, they're shrouded. We don't see them, but they're Nisim, like the net of the B'nai Sasha with the doctor. Like the net of the watch coming together again. These are Nisim. Well, we were excited to be in Eretz Yisrael in the time to the base of Mikdash. We saw a lot of Nisim. In Beis Amigdash, there were ten Nisim happening Seder over and over again in Yerushalayim, like the Mishnah says in Pirkei Yavis. People missed seeing Nisim. Now we're in Golas. The Rabbani Shiladim hides. The Rabbani Shiladim is shrouded in Teva, in the nature. He doesn't show us Nisim like Nisim. But he shows us Nisim like the Megillah. If anybody reads the Megillah and he tries to analyze what's happening in the Megillah, he will see that it's Nisim. They're not the type of Nisim of Yitzhiyat Mitzrayim, but they're even bigger Nisim. They're the type of Nisim of the Megillah. But everything happened just when you needed it. Just when it had to be. The Rabbani Shilayim knew that there will be a Gzair of Haman. So he removed Vashti. She was replaced with Esther. So that Esther should be able to make the nets. The Rabbani Shilayim made it that just when Bixen and Seresh were plotting against the king, just then, uh, just then Mordechai happened to be there. The Rabbani Shlomo made it that just when Achashvayra shouldn't be able to sleep, just then they should tell him that Mordechai saved his life. The Rabbani Shlomo made it that just when Haman came to ask the king to hang up Mordechai, just then Chavayna was there to tell the king that Haman wants to kill Mordechai, who saved the king's life. Everything happened just in place. It's like the parts of my watch coming together again, just when you need it. Just exactly in place. That's a mess. You see this Nisim over and over again, even today. Some of you will still remember a number of years ago when the Iraqis attacked Eretz Yisrael with their scuds. Thirty-nine scuds fell on Eretz Yisrael. It broke, it ruined a lot of buildings. Buildings came tumbling down. Nobody got killed. There was one person who did get killed out of 39 scuds. That person already was sentenced to be killed. He had a klala from the sky plug on the Chayna Lebrach. That 
that person hung up a sign on his door which read, Anaychi Aychayel Chazir, I eat pig. And then on Shadashudas, on Shabbos, he drove with his motorcycle into a walk in Bismedrash and disturbed the Shadashudas. So the Stiker gave him a club. He is the only one who was killed through the 39 scuds. That was a mess. And then when the Iraqis shot one scud on the American army, some 30 odd people, 30 odd soldiers got killed. You can't say that it was a supernatural mess, but don't you see that it's a mess? Don't you see that the Rabbani Shradim is controlling the world? Don't you see that whatever, whatever, happens in, in, whatever happens in the world is controlled by a hand from above? That Hamelech, the Rabbani Shalaylam, the Madrid says, whenever it says Hamelech in the Megid, it means the Rabbani Shalaylam. The Pshat is the Hashveirash, but the Hashveirash can't do what he wants. The Rabbani Shalaylam controls the Hashveirash. Hamelech means the Rabbani Shalaylam. Don't you see that in the Megid, there are Nisim? Don't you see that what's happening today in the world, there are Nisim? So, that's, but it's it, in an adegat, adol, it's cloaked up. And that's what Purim is about. Purim teaches us how to read the Megillah. Purim teaches us how to read the world. Purim teaches us how to read history, how to read current events. Purim teaches us if you look into history, if you analyze just exactly what happened and why it happened, everything in the right place. If you look into current events, you can see the Rabbani Shalaitim there. It's a game of hide and go seek. Purim is a game. Find the Rabbani Shalaitim. And the Rabbani Shalaitim says on Purim, find me. Find me in the Megillah. And if you're trained to read the Megillah, then you're trained to find the Rabbani Shalaitim in your life. You can see Nisim in your own life. You can see Nisim in your family. Things happened exactly in the right place, which was a Yeshua. You can see Nisim for cloudy soil. Purim teaches you how to look at the world and find the Rabbi Yishleilam and say, Rabbi Yishleilam, I found you. It's a game of hide and go seek. And that's why on Purim, we all sit down to eat by the food of Purim and we drink wine and we rejoice and then somebody knocks at the door and comes in with red pants and an orange blouse with a gun in the hand. I'm not scared. I ask him, which yeshiva do you collect for? <laughs> because he's cloaked up. It's just, it's just a costume. Everybody in the world, all the kings of nations, all the ministers, all the heads of government, they're cloaked up. It's the Rabbani Shladim who's controlling them. They're all dressed with an Adaras. The Adaras of the Chaydish Adam. And that's why when somebody knows how to read the Megillah and he makes the bracha, I'll make the Megillah, I know how to read the Megillah, then he can make a bracha, She'asa Nisam Lavaseinu, Bachrim, the same Rabbi Shalaylam who made the Asara Makis in Mitzrayim, the same Rabbi Shalaylam who made Kiyas Yamsim, the same Rabbi Shalaylam who made the mud fall down, the same Rabbi Shalaylam who makes bread grow from the ground. That same Rabbi Nishraim is doing an Eastern for you and for whole cloud Israel this very day. Purim is the day 
that we have to learn this lesson. To know that the Rabbi Yishalayim Sajgacha is now with us like it was by Bayanim Ha'ayim by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Find the Rabbi Yishalayim. When something happens in your life, when something happens in your family, when something happens in the newspapers and your parents tell you about it, when something happens to cloud your soil, your first reaction would be, where can I find the Rabbani Shalom there? I'm sure that the Rabbani Shalom is hiding behind. He's hiding there. I gotta find him. There are needs him. Train yourself. Drill yourself. Put them as an exercise in the moon in believing that Rabbani Shredam controls the world. He controls all the heads of the nations. He controls whatever happens in the world. He controls whatever happens to the individual, to every individual, with ashgacha pratis, with individual attention. And we're all very happy. We're all very fortunate to know, I have nothing to worry about. The Rabbani Shalom is taking care of me. Whatever happens, the Rabbani Shalom is taking care of me. If you're going to train yourself to think that way, if you're going to use Purim as an exercise, as a drill, to know that everything is controlled by the Rabbani Shalom, then you know what Purim is. I'll try to confirm. Press 1 through 16.